Hi everybody. Um, this is not the way I usually do my lives. I'm usually at home and um, usually just pretty much hanging out. <laughs> and um, hi Dahlia. Um, and I instead um, was out doing some errands and so I wanted to um, just make sure we still had the time to so I'm here in my car. And I'm waiting for Dahlia. She's going to join us in a minute. Um, I see her coming. And ah, there she is. Hi. There she is. So uh, unusual times, unusual times. So I, I'm in my car, which I normally don't do, uh, don't do lives in. I'm normally at home, but I was running some errands for my parents and my, my in-laws. Um, because we want them to stay at home right now. And so I've just finished up and we're a little bit late. So I apologize to everybody. Um, but I, th I think that this, um, this, this time, which feels so disjointed and so scary for so many of us, um, with also Pesach looming, is Passover looming, is sort of is an extra added layer of stress that I think the rest of the world doesn't feel. So I wanted to, um, this is Dahlia Davis from Uprooted. And Hi, everyone. I, uh, so tell me how you're doing. Tell me where you're holding. Um, so this is just a really crazy time. And I'll start off by sharing an email I got earlier today that really kind of struck me. It was from the acupuncturist that held my hand every step of the way through my own journey. And she wrote that, you know, it's the heavy heart as all the emails start that she's closing her practice for the next two weeks. And I just thought, oh, my goodness, like, what is everybody going to do? Like, what is that like to get that email and realize the person who's been carrying you and who you go to every single week and who makes sure that you feel like you're progressing, you know, and I'm sure there's people who have had all sorts of things canceled and all sorts of obstacles placed in their way on their fertility journey. Um, you know, how difficult is that for everyone? And so I'm so glad that we have this opportunity to come together and kind of you know, whether it's venting or trying to process it or even trying to do like a little bit of uplifting healing, um, just to take a minute to acknowledge where we're all at. Absolutely. I, you know, I, I've also been getting lots of texts, lots of emails, lots of messages, DMs from different people who, um, who say things like, you know, I'm, I'm worried my cycle's going to get canceled. My cycle yeah. is getting canceled. My, you know, my doctor's only, uh, you know, we were supposed to start next month and we're not starting because nobody knows. The doctor is only continuing with the people who are already sort of in process. Yeah. So I, I this is really, I, I even thought and I posted it, there was a message from someone who said, um, you know, that they had gone through so much and had a cycle last month and unfortunately that cycle failed. And while they were devastated at the time, now looking back, they actually feel relieved because the world is so uncertain that, you know, mm. what, 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 what would that even look like at this point? Um, yeah. So there are, there are so many different layers and so many different pieces and, and things that everybody is feeling. Yeah, and if I could just throw in there also, like, people who need to travel for adoptions, like, that's going to be impossible now, or, or certainly extremely challenging. Um, so for yeah. surrogacy as well. Yeah, exactly, or any part of this. So um, there's so many layers to the struggle in this moment. Yeah, so we thought that we would kind of, like, think a little bit about how this is really connected to some of the themes of Pesach, of Passover, that are coming up, um, and kind of delve into that while we're thinking about this experience together. And kind of one thing that came to mind with that was really this idea of being, like, enslaved to something and being trapped and held on to and not really having your own... Um, freedom to do as you'd like right now I, when we kind of when I was first thinking about this idea it was before coronavirus and now the idea of being like enslaved and trapped and losing freedom feels like it's like bells ringing like it's so loud um, and so potent 
And so kind of this really, the idea that the beginning of the journey, it starts with this moment of being enslaved and trapped. Um, and I assume that many people out there are kind of feeling the sense of trapped, whether they're trapped in their apartment or trapped in their, you know, the, like you said, like they can't move forward with their fertility cycles or they can't move forward with whatever process they're hoping to do because of everything that's going on. Absolutely. I think that, I mean, that, that feeling of entrapment really resonates for so many on so many different levels, both the psychological sort of slavery of knowing that, I think we all know also that the next number of weeks are going to be hard. They're, they're going to be very hard. And, and I, I, I often think about, sorry about that, um, especially as Passover, as Pesach is coming, you know, like the thinking about what the Jews must have felt like when they were in Egypt, in Mitzrayim, and feeling like these, you know, we know that they were there for, um, oh, now I'm losing it. It's okay, 210. 210. Right. 210. <laughs> right, I know it wasn't, it wasn't that long. That's okay. And, and, and that's a very long time, regardless of whether, you know, we, you know, we, we know how the story ends because we, we have the entire story. But I think, you know, we can look, and we can look back at, at it retrospectively. But for us sitting here in this situation right now, we don't know how the story ends yet. And that the, the uncertainty of all of it is just mm -hmm. very overwhelming. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so if anyone's open to commenting, would anybody like to kind of throw in some specifics? I'm um, not necessarily identity specifics, just like I feel trapped in, like, how would you enter that? Um, how would you finish that fill in the blank? Um, and Amy, can you see the comments as they yes. come? Yeah, you guys, okay. if, you, if you guys want to comment and want to say um, how you're feeling trapped or how you're feeling, you know, quote unquote, enslaved, um, you can definitely drop them in the comment box. Um, the plan, the plan for this session is to, you know, do a little bit more work here. I think Dali is also going to guide us through a meditation. Yeah. Try to, um, bring the stress level down a little bit for all of us and mm -hmm. just help us to try to fig find a different way to deal with all of the emotions that we're all experiencing right now. Um, and then, um, what we're going to do is we're going to move um, after this, we're going to move to Zoom, and hopefully we can have more of a collaborative session there um, if people are interested in doing that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and people are welcome to join on the Zoom in video or phone, so you can be as present um, visually or not as you like, so feel comfortable doing whatever's best for you. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, okay, so I can't tell if there's comments, so Amy, you'll just tell me if there are. Um, but I'm gonna. There's nothing yet. I think everybody's yeah, okay. absorbing and listening. Which I think sure, is. absolutely. Um, so as Amy mentioned, I would love to kind of let us have a moment of breathing together, and I'll take you through a little meditation. Um, for me. I had never really done meditation before until I was on my fertility journey, and then I was introduced to it. And these types of like specific guided imageries, um, that one of this that a teacher shared with me were like my breath that carried me through my journey. So um, if this is something that is helpful for you, I'm, I'm really happy to share it with you. Um, and kind of just taking this moment to think through, we're gonna start in a place of slavery, but we'll end in a place hopefully of like seeing like a glimmer, hopefully of freedom. Okay, um, so I invite you to start out by kind of however you wanna sit down or lie down, just be comfortable in your place. And if you feel comfortable, you can close your eyes. And we'll start by kind of just taking three deep breaths together. So just really slowly breathe in. And then you can exhale. And breathe in again. And exhale. And one more time. Inhale, and slowly let the air out. And as you sit comfortably in your mind's eye, I invite you to envision yourself 
sleeping peacefully in a bed. This need not be your actual bed, but rather envision an anonymous, colorless, but comfortable bed. Once you see yourself asleep, allow your sleep cycle to come to a conclusion and slowly begin to wake up. You can keep your eyes closed as you envision all of this. And as you wake up in your mind's eye, you can open your eyes in your mind and notice that there's a brick wall in front of you. You try to push it, but it won't budge. You then glance around and notice that there is an identical wall on all four sides of you. Let's breathe. Then you take a step closer and you notice that there's writing on these bricks. The words on these bricks express ways in which you currently feel trapped. Answer internally, um, what do these bricks say? Do they all say the same thing? Are there multiple different answers? Do the bricks describe a way in which you feel trapped physically or psychologically, socially, spiritually, or in any other way? Breathe. You then notice one brick that looks different from all the others. You approach it and you push on it and all the other bricks melt away. And now you are free to go. Do you know what it says on that brick, that brick of freedom? Do you know what would set you free? Breathe deeply. And when you are ready, I invite you to open your eyes. Wow. Wow. I, I, I mean, for me personally, I think my heart rate just went from like 150 back down to 75 probably lives normally. <laughs> That's kind of the goal. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, half of the 150 was also because I was rushing to make sure we got here. And, yes. And, yes. <laughs> but I think the other 150 is just about all of our, uh, you know, external circumstances right now. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but that was, um, that that was truly incredible. That was Thank truly you. incredible. Thank you. Um, well, we really have this kind of theme throughout Pesach of, you know, going from slavery to freedom and of the bricks that the Jewish people had to use in Egypt to build all of the towers and all of the work. And then, oops, sorry, suddenly, you know, before then the point when they probably felt there was no way out, there was some way out. Um, and that's kind of something that we can think about as we go into these weeks where it might seem like there's no way out and in the journey where it might feel like often there's no way out. Um, and then sometimes we find a way, a way that might surprise us, a way that we weren't expecting, a way that was different than what we had envisioned. But hopefully we can each in some way find that brick that lets us get out. And sometimes we know what it is and sometimes we don't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, but, and, and sometimes the brick is something tangible. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. people say, like, I know that if I finally could be pregnant, then I'd feel that all of, all of my brick walls would come down. Yeah. And for other people, it might just be, you know, knowing, you know, knowing what's going to happen in the month of April, mm -hmm. you know, or, or knowing what's going to happen tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah. For everyone that, that has a different, has a different answer in terms of what it means to that person. Yeah. I, I know for me right now, that brick specifically means that everyone in my family is healthy. 
and we're all going to make it through this, whatever this is and however long this is. That's, that's my book. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think my brick is maybe a little bit less specific, but just kind of the feeling of hope, you know, a feeling like if I can feel hope, whether that's, you know, in this particular virus situation or if that's in the fertility journey or any other struggle, when I feel like I can attach myself to that or it feels like it's resonating, then I feel like I can get out. But without that, I feel like I'm trapped. That's beautiful. That's, 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 I mean, hope, hope is everything that all of us need right now. Exactly. Regardless of whatever circumstance and whatever piece you specifically are struggling with, hope is what we all need. So absolutely. Yeah. Thank you. Um, So I think we'd love to give people an opportunity to kind of speak with one another more intimately um, and to kind of share if they want to any parts of, well, you know, was trapping them and then what they feel might set them free and get into a little bit of that on Zoom. Um, so Amy, would you like to talk about anything else here or should we transition? What works for you? Yeah, no, I, th- I think we can transition. Let's, let's, um, let's transition over. Um, so, Everybody, um, the link, the link for the Zoom is um, is going to is is in my profile. You can get it right there. Very easy. Just click on it. We're going to head over there. Um, you know, within the next minute or so. And if anyone would like to share, great. If you don't want to share, then we'll spend a few minutes there and talk a little bit more, and then and then we'll close. But we we, we the reason why we do different um, formats is really to enable people to have more interfacing and, and have more of a collaborative feel so that people can share with each other. On Insta Lives, it's really hard to do that. So Yeah, exactly. All right. All right. We'll see everybody soon. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Bye.